This is your invitation to be part of one of the greatest youth movements of all time. The Global Call to Action. Peace Sham brings young people together with Nobel Peace Laureates to tackle the toughest issues facing the planet. Change starts here and we want you to be a part of it. September 2006. Ten leading Nobel Peace Laureates and over 3,000 young people from all over the world gather in Denver for the 10th anniversary of the Peace Jam Foundation. The Dalai Lama, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and eight other exceptional leaders. It's the greatest gathering of Nobel Peace Laureates ever held in the USA, and the purpose is to issue a global call to action. What a fantastic bunch of people. I'm really uh, quite something. Together, they launched a 10-year global call to action campaign designed to tackle what the Laureates believe are the 10 greatest threats to the survival and well-being of our planet today. By the year 2016, with your help, they're hoping to inspire one billion global call to action projects, working on these core issues. And together, the Nobel laureates and the youth of the world, and anyone else who wants to join in, we will work together to transform the world, to transform our future. We're inviting you to be part of it. It seemed a crazy idea uh, at the time when they started, but uh, it has gained an incredible kind of momentum and has made a huge, huge difference uh, in the lives of many young people, uh, giving them hope uh, and, and direction. It was a simple idea, putting young people together with Nobel Peace Prize winners. On this spot in the spring of 1994, I saw four young Latino males carrying guns. These guys were my neighbors. These guys lived across the street from me for years. I said, hey guys, come over here. I want to talk to you for a second. They came over and said, what's up? I said, what are you doing with a the gun? They said, well, we have a business. I said, well, what do you need the gun for? They said, to protect our turf. And I said, to have a business, you got to be pretty smart. And I haven't seen you guys go to school in three years. So I asked them a question. Who's the president of the United States? They said, we don't know and we don't care because the President of the United States doesn't represent our interests. We tripped over the topic of South Africa and these young men went off. They went, oh yeah, Archbishop Desmond Tutu's this little guy and he stood up in front of the guns of apartheid. He's so bad, he went to jail. They did everything and he never carried a gun. And I said, why don't you be a little bit more like Desmond Tutu and not carry a gun? So I had this idea to put young people together with Nobel Peace Prize winners in an education program that was based in service learning, but I didn't know where to start. I had no one to turn to until I remembered this woman. And so I started talking to her about it every day, driving her crazy, saying, Nobel Peace Laureates and Youth, kids and Nobel Peace Prize winners, kids and Nobel Peace Prize winners, kids and You would Nobel not Peace Prize stop. You I probably drove her and crazy. And talking. You did. And he just was so excited about the idea that finally I said, well, you know what? Yeah, I'll help. We put the plan together. We contacted the chief of staff for the Dalai Lama, and he said yes. Yes, come to India, meet the Dalai Lama, and present him with your idea. So I had a dollar seventy-nine in my bank account at the time, being a poor person, and I was going around to my friends saying, "Hey, could you let me ten twenty dollars so I could buy a round trip ticket to India because I have a meeting with the Dalai Lama." And they. No one believed they, they laughed it. in my face. <laughs> Everybody laughed. No one believed we had this meeting, but somehow we were able to convince enough people to lend us the money so that we could fly to India, meet with the Dalai Lama. He loved the idea, and he said, yes, I will do this. And he wanted us also to contact other Nobel Peace Prize winners who are friends of his so young people could study these other Nobel Peace Prize winners to get a different perspective on the world. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 for his courageous leadership in efforts to find a non-violent solution to the conflicts over the policy of apartheid in South Africa. Oscar Arias, president of Costa Rica, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1987 for his efforts to negotiate a peaceful resolution to the years of conflict and war in Central America. 
Rigoberta Menchu Tum was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1992 for her work as a peaceful advocate for Native Indian rights in Central America and for her leadership among indigenous peoples worldwide. The Dalai Lama was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989 for his nonviolent efforts to resolve the Tibetan conflict and for his worldwide role as a man of peace and advocate for the environment. Aung San Suu Kyi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991 for her nonviolent leadership of the democratic opposition in Burma. She has been under house arrest since 1989. Jose Ramos Horta was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1996 for his sustained efforts to end the oppression of the East Timorese people. Betty Williams was presented with the Nobel Peace Prize in 1977 for her efforts to create a grassroots movement to end the violence in Northern Ireland. Jody Williams and the International Campaign to Ban Landmines were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1997 for their work in the banning of and the clearing of anti-personnel landmines. Shirin Ibadi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2003 for her efforts to promote women's and children's rights, as well as peace and democracy in the Middle East. Adolfo Perez Esquival was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1980 for his leadership for human rights and true democracy for the people of Latin America. Mairead Corrigan McGuire was presented with the Nobel Peace Prize in 1977 for her efforts to create a grassroots movement to end the violence in Northern Ireland. So we ended up back here in Denver, Colorado, cold calling Nobel Peace Prize winners. Calling long distance information in Cape Town, South Africa. Can you hook me up with Archbishop Desmond Tutu? And they said, <laughs> man, you're crazy. If somebody as flawed and average as us can get a program up and running like this, imagine what you can do. The lack of access to clean water and arable land is an increasing problem for many people around the world, and the struggle over these limited resources provides fuel for war and conflict, especially in those parts of the world where the population is exploding. Racism and the growing divide between rich and poor are endemic. This is creating a tremendous time bomb, ready to go off at any moment, and making it easier for demagogues to fuel hate and to rule by fear. One of the effects of globalization is the spread of disease and the potential for devastating new diseases to ravage humanity. The rapid movement of people and goods means that many third world diseases are now threatening the developed world and have now become the problem of everyone. Our world cannot be secure when so many billions of people are forced to exist on less than a dollar a day without access to even the most basic levels of shelter, sustenance, or education. Extreme poverty can be eliminated in our lifetimes, and this must remain a fundamental goal. The lack of basic human rights and civil liberties, and the persistence of social injustice over long periods of time, with no hope or plan for progress or change, always creates a backlash. It is essential to bring an end to the exploitation of children and to defend the basic human rights of women around the world. This includes the right to a decent education. The role of women and youth as leaders in local communities must be fostered and encouraged. Global warming is a reality, and only by a concentrated effort involving individual citizens, civil society, and our government leaders can we address the many causes for the precarious situation we have created for ourselves here on Earth. The world still wastes nearly a trillion dollars each year on the weapons of war. We must end the ever-increasing spiral of expenditures on arms, both nuclear and conventional, which only serves to increase the likelihood of violent conflict. One of the first things that we must do is to dismantle our own armed consciousness because we are children of a culture of violence and our minds have been armed. What is required is a profound understanding of the new realities created by our increasingly interconnected and interdependent world. In order to create increased security in this new world in which we live, we must focus on the issue of human security. When we ensure that basic human needs are met, we are creating a more secure world. 
The time has come to shift our energy and our resources from military security to a long-term investment in true human security. And this global call to action, it really matters to each and every one of us. Each and every one of us must do our part to help change the problems of the world. Every breath that you take, every glass of water that you drink, life as you know it today, it is going to be transformed. The world is changing. How is that change going to affect you? Are you going to be part of the problem or part of the solution? Every great social movement throughout history has started with the actions of just a few courageous souls who believed and, and they acted and it seemed so in insignificant really what they did, but those actions started to add together, drop by drop. Pretty soon it was an ocean, pretty soon it was a tidal wave and things changed. If there are enough people who see things differently and are willing to take action, don't care what other people think, that there is hope. The first step is for you to pick your issue. Find one of the global calls to actions that you connect with. Maybe it's something that you're already working on. What do you see that's going around you, in your community, or even in the world? What are the different pieces to that global call? What things interest you? What things relate to you? Once you've selected an issue, put it in your own words. What is it really trying to say? Our friend Fito in Argentina didn't really pick the issue of breaking the cycle of violence. In reality, the issue kind of picked him. Years of military dictatorship has left Argentines unemployed and with very little trade skills. Many have turned to violence as it's the only thing they've known. Kids like Fido don't get many opportunities in life. One of nine children in the family, Fido's father is a drug addict. My father was a person who was in his time, he was drugged a lot, and drugs are always violence. Carpentry, metalworking, all manner of job skills, horticulture, rabbit breeding. The aldeas are schools that give youth a chance to learn something more important than violence and aggression, a job skill that can earn money and put food on the table. Fido concentrates on learning all he can about breeding rabbits. Once he knows the business, the idea is that he would pass on these skills to other family members. Estamos con una conciencia de agresión, de violencia. And slowly, Gradually, you break down the cycle of violence and deprivation that blights the lives of street kids like Fido. You picked your issue. Now check out the facts. Take some time to do the research and determine how big it really is. Do a little investigating. The Nobel Peace Laureates want you to find the root causes. They want you to find what factors have led to the problem and if those factors are still around today. There is information to use all around you. You can do a search on the computer. You can read a newspaper. Or use data that your school, city, or any group has already collected about this issue. Have fun with it and remember to get different perspectives. Don't get all your information from the same place. You want a well-rounded and balanced look at the problem. Jessica, a college student in the U.S., traveled the entire state of Missouri to check out the facts for her issue. Life is funny, so you have to be able to laugh at it when funny stuff happens. I'm kind of the peacekeeper in the family, so I'm always the one who tries to be neutral. While researching school closures around the state of Missouri, Jessica is shocked to learn that state employee pension funds are invested in companies that are helping to fuel the genocide in the Sudan. 70% of the money that Sudan gets from oil goes straight to their military, and the military is who is fueling this genocide, who is working with the Janjaween to kill people on Darfur. So essentially, our money is helping to kill people in Sudan. And I don't think that's right. And I'm not the only one. I believe in education fully and totally believe in education and I would hope that money, if we did take it, which I hope that we do take it out of Sudan, money would come back to Missouri, to schools in Missouri. The primary responsibility of a government is to protect its citizens from crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide, etc. And when a government cannot or will not do that, it is then the responsibility of the international community. That means 
it is our responsibility. And we can stick our head in the ground like an ostrich and hope it goes away, but it's not going to go away unless we do something. And I since you want to be a good citizen of the world, we'll do dollars for Darfur. Great. And we'll save Darfur. Get out your shovels. It's time to dig deeper. We want you to look, listen, take pictures, talk to people in your community. Get a feel for how this issue is really impacting things around you. It can be as simple as taking a walk in your community. Where do you see this issue? What does it look like? Who knows about this problem you could talk to or interview? Who is affected by this? How do they feel about it? It's time to get out there and use your eyes, ears, hands, and voice to dig a little deeper. A teenager named Fernando did exactly this in Guatemala. Guatemala, one of Central America's most violent societies, may have a rare opportunity to escape its terrible blood-stained past. This woman is the source of that opportunity. Rigoberta's whole life has been a struggle against the evils of racism, and it now culminates in an historic bid to lead the nation. It's a battle. The election is a battle that I had not seen in the front. Fernando Ramos, a budding young human rights activist, wants to do what he can to support Rigoberta's campaign. He has no expertise in politics. He is, however, a great communicator and begins investigating the depth of Mayan racism in his country. If we want to change our country, we must change ourselves. If there is no peace inside, there will not be peace outside. We must have a collective to move forward to move forward in all the things. You have checked out the facts, dug a little deeper, and by now you should know quite a bit about your issue. It's time to create a project. What are some creative solutions to the issues that haven't been tried? What can you do? What is your goal? Remember to take into account the time and the resources you have. Then write up your plan. You can use the form that's on Peace Jam website to help you out. Who will the project help? What will that actually do and accomplish? How will it be done? When will it be finished? And where will it take place? Here is how our friend Vidal developed a plan with President Horte to address the issue of extreme poverty in East Timor. East Timor is one of the world's poorest nations. More than 90% of its population lives on less than a dollar a day. For almost 30 years, the country suffered a brutal oppression under the Indonesian military. The president, Jose Ramos Horta, reviews a tree planting project which could help local youth to end poverty. Through this program, you achieve so many things. You immediately distribute tens of thousands of dollars, cash, to people who don't have money. You keep them busy because they will work and same time preserve nature and water. Vidal decides to take up the challenge and, with the help of his friends, makes plans to plant and nurture 1,000 trees. I myself, honestly, I don't know how to plant a tree. Well, you have to protect each tree, not only from pests, but from the animals. Due to extreme poverty, entire forests are being cut down for use as firewood. The forestation is about 1% per year. We have to find what is available what is left and alive and doing well, and take from that and make more. We're just two normal guys who want to plant some trees, but yet this is what we have to deal with. Now it's time to get out there and do it. Here are a few things to keep in mind. Keep notes on what you're doing. That way you can share it with others. Ask other people to get involved. Work side by side with the people affected by the issue to carry out your project and achieve your goal. You don't want to do projects to them, you want to do projects with them. Address the root cause of the issue. Don't just put a band-aid on it. Let's take a look at a young peace jammer named Scrooge, who used his creative talent as a rapper to address the problem of AIDS in his hometown of Kailisha, South Africa. In Kailisha, the AIDS scourge is as bad as anywhere in Africa, or as anywhere on Earth. Each day claims the lives of two of Kailisha's citizens. Kailisha Township is only a few minutes' drive from Cape Town, home to one of South Africa's most distinguished citizens, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Statistics 
Who said they were statistics? If somebody is mommy, if somebody is daddy, if somebody is son, if somebody is child, it could, it could, yeah, it could be yours. Culture, culture, black place where black they dwell. Scrooge's weapon in his personal commitment to fight the AIDS plague is his gift as a rapper. The pen and the paper. My biggest mission is to put a festival that's going to be happening on the fifth month of May because globally they are celebrating the month of rap. So we would love to be focusing on HIV, the musicians that will be using our independent musician, that they will be testing amongst the audience. There's so much to do. Publicity, tickets to get printed, speakers, staging, and all the other equipment to organize. Scrooge's head is spinning. No matter how difficult or complicated the problem is, you can find a way to tackle it. No matter how old you are or where you live, there is a way to do something. The global call to action. Young people around the world are already taking up the call. They're making the real difference in their own communities. In England, Libby and her friends have decided to tackle one of the toughest issues out there, human rights and social justice. <laughs> Many young Muslims have become seriously alienated from British society, and the recent erosion of their civil liberties has caused many to instead forge their identities in fundamentalist forms of Islam. We need to understand the importance of equality within these communities. I guess I'm kind of sociable with people who I've known for a while, but I hate it when people kind of talk about people behind their backs. Maraid is very much a hands-on laureate, and 14-year-old Libby gets the chance to meet her in person to discuss a project her and her schoolmates might undertake to reach out to her Muslim neighbors. Some people in school are looked down on by the other students because of what they are and that they're different from them. And we were trying to reach out to the Muslim community in school and try and help them and see what they're feeling by all of this. I think that Northern Ireland is only a model of what we are going to see more and more around the world. You can make a difference for yourself, your neighbours, your community and your world. Young people like Loden, a Tibetan refugee in India, are already showing us how. Global warming poses a great threat to India. By the year 2015, 500 million people will have no access to clean drinking water. It's not a science fiction, it's a reality. Glaciers are melting. 18-year-old Tenzin Loden, one of a group of Tibetan students, has decided to take up the Dalai Lama's call for global action on the water crisis threatening India. After meeting with his sonless, I was more excited than before to carry out this project. Youth around the world, from kindergarten to college, are participating in Peace Jam educational programs. Check out the Peace Jam website to find out more. How will you answer the call? Become part of Peace Jam's global call to action. Change starts here. Change starts here. Change starts here. El cambio empieza aquí. Change starts here. Change starts here. Le change commence ici. Change starts here. Change starts here. Change starts here. Change starts here. For more information about this or any of the many other Peace Jam programs, please visit peacejam.org.